Yo, what's up YouTube? I've got some batteries to try and make a decent lithium ion battery which I can charge from my wind turbine and uh, run my diesel heater on. So these are the batteries I ended up buying and I only ended up buying these because uh, firstly I wanted to experiment with these kind of cells rather than the eight which are these which I'm sure you're all familiar with. Uh, so yeah these may end up being a lot easier to set up and combine into one pack because there'll be uh, less awkward soldering involved. I have done this before so I do know what I'm doing. So potentially if we err on the side of extreme optimism uh, then I've calculated that because they're 62 watt hours there's a maximum of 1426 watt hours capacity in all these batteries which is actually quite a lot. These you'll see are seven uh, 7.6 volts and they're Dell very good qu build quality especially if you compare them to a knockoff uh, laptop battery uh, I took the liberty of taking some apart just to have a quick look and these let me just zoom in a sec so you, you can see there that's what the pack says uh, 15 0.66 watt hours and 3.82 volts. So, obviously, they come when they arrive in the pack. I'll just zoom that sec. Oh, come on. When they arrive in the pack, they come with the BMS, the charge module, which is here, and the negative output is here and the positive output is on this side. I did take the liberty of testing some. Uh, you can see that one was 7.51 volts. That was 7.74. What you mustn't do is you mustn't uh, bring the BMS into contact with any metal, and that includes another BMS, so as long as you don't do that, you're right. 7.74. I took the liberty of charging this one, and that ended up at 8.4. I've left it 24 hours, and it's come down to... 8.25 so it's too early to draw any conclusions that's those three that one I charged up and it's come down to 6.55 that one I didn't charge up and that's at 7.42 and this one uh, I've just put a zero because I can't get a reading right now my idea is that I make a 4s battery which ends up with a maximum of 16.8 volts and then as my diesel heater uh, works from 10 to 15 volts, I've bought this little gizmo, which will enable me, let me try zooming in. I've bought this little gizmo that should enable me to put, uh, what is it in? So the battery, uh, hang on a sec, let me get my brain working. One second. So yeah, the power will come from the 16.8 volt battery in this side, and then it'll be adjusted to 14 on this side the out, presumably that little screw there is what we'll need to do on that. But the, the logic behind that is that I was thinking of making a 3S battery pack, but that only gives a maximum voltage of 12.6. So by having a 16.8, uh, we've got a lot more to play with and the battery should run the diesel heater for a lot longer. That, that was, uh, let me just tell you how much that was. That was seven pounds off eBay. You'll notice because I made the uh, Chinese an offer, which they, obviously thought it was derogatory they sent me a they sent me a bashed up one look because the bike now price is 8.99 and i offered seven so they sent me a bashed up one so thanks for that and anything else one moment so you're going to try and have a close-up look at the battery itself and then i'm just going to show you how to dismantle one of them uh, without causing any damage they've got these uh, clips here which need to be snapped bear, bear in mind i'm not wanting to keep the pack in pristine condition if you did want to then you would have to find a different method Let's put my glasses on. So I found the very best method, and I have tried a few different ones, is to go around the whole battery. So I'm trying to be focused. Right, get the get the end of a little screwdriver to go all the way through, and then we're going to use this corner to make sure that there's no damage to the battery. So when I do that, that's that connector done. So all I have to do is do each one. Now, like I said, I'm not wanting to keep 
or reuse the pack itself. But by doing it this way, all the stress is going on to that hard plastic corner. We're not putting anything into the battery or anywhere near the battery. So that's, that's one end done. That's the easy bit done. That's one of the short sides done. Right, this bit's a bit tricky around the back with the battery, uh, with the power connector. So now we can open it. Uh, there's two ways to do this. You can either spend a little while longer busting out that connector or we can just carefully prise it open. That's what I'm gonna do. There, right, so that's the top bit. Oh, very light. Very light indeed, but yeah, that's the bottom or the top off. Now I just need to go get my thingy. So I wanted to show you these because here's two that I removed earlier. And you'll see the glue is in very particular areas. So that's another good thing about buying a large lump of the same type of cells. You know what to expect. So I know theoretically there's a dobber glue under each end here. And then there's strips of glue along here. And we can also notice that that is what we need to avoid. The little plasticky metal strip. So I'm using a manky looking scraper which is got some stuff left on it which is good because it kind of makes it smooth so we get under the first corner carefully and we know we can slide up all the way to where that little thing is so if I do that again sliding it up just don't slide under that bit yet Now that enables us to do that, and this bit is super easy, they'll slip off like they've got butter holding them on. There you go. So there again, the glue's in exactly the same place on all of them. Sweet! So I'm just going to get a multimeter quickly and test them over the two contacts. But bear in mind, presumably if the BMS is faulty, then you won't get a reading off uh, the end ones. Like I say, these haven't been charged or anything, so whatever we get, we get. Anything above zero is good. So these say 3.8 volts. Basically, my understanding of the scenario is if they go under three, they're knackered, and that's that. So let's see what we're saying. Other way. 7.59. So when you consider that, the voltage is 7.6, then that's pretty good. That doesn't really mean anything. It might be completely dead. They might be completely useless. But as, as I've said, if there's 15 watts in each one, theoretically, and I can't remember if I've mentioned this, but quite often you'll find with these things, you see the little temperature probe there. If this one battery's got hot, then it'll shut the whole thing down and you might end up with one knackered battery and three good ones. So... Yeah, so that's basically it for now, but I just wanted to show you that. Uh, hang on, let me just do a draw in a sec. I just want to show you this, because that's I'm going to be using one of these IMAX B6 Pro chargers, rather than a BMS. The reason I'm not using a BMS is because I can't afford one that's going to be reliable, and I have had the BMS cheap ones just disintegrate and just destroy everything. Uh, that was charging one of the, the cells via two uh, bulldog clips. But yeah, that's the type of charger I'm going to be using, and this will connect directly to my wind turbine and that's the beauty of that so this is the idea we have the wind turbine uh, coming to the orange box then we have the three 12 volt batteries or two in parallel and then off those batteries we can connect one of those chargers to the lithium ion battery and the good thing is uh, somebody commented uh, on the wind turbine saying oh what's the point because the brake's coming on too quick and I understand that but the idea of having something like this is, is we could run two or three of these IMAX chargers 
and each one of them could take out 50, 60, 70, 80 watts. So what that would do, the turbine, that would allow the turbine to make three or 400 watts because it is keen to go. But as somebody rightly said, when it, when it hits, it will go from 12 volts to 14 volts instantly and then the controller brake comes on, which renders it kind of pointless. So by taking power out of the batteries constantly, hopefully it gives the turbine more leeway to put more in. It'll still brake at 14, uh, but hopefully we could get three or 400 volt, uh, watts out of it first. Uh, there's, de there's definitely power in that in that turbine, you know. I got a bit down because the other night uh, it wasn't working as well as I could, but there's definitely juice in that. And here again is the, this box will only come into play when I connect up my diesel heater, because hopefully we'll have a battery at 16.8 volts, and then we can connect this in, so the diesel heater. Uh, the battery, yeah, sorry, I did say the battery won't have a BMS. I'm going to, so fundamentally it will... Uh, the IMAX works like a BMX, BMX, BMS when it's charging, okay, uh, using the balance leads, which I'm sure some of you are aware of. But when it's discharging, it won't have a BMS. And well, I don't think that's going to be a problem because it's not going to, um, there's going to be no high load activity. If I'm running a diesel heater off the battery, it uses 10 amps for about 45 seconds and then it'll go down to 3 amps. So anyway, we'll keep an eye out for that. If you've got any questions or comments, I'll try and answer them. Sweet.